Ce n'est pas tous les jours que la famille Hamilton fait rugir les 300 chevaux de leurs bijoux. Une Holden Director, un modèle rarissime, un des derniers fabriqués dans l'usine d'Adélaïde. Keith Hamilton a voulu se l'offrir comme un cadeau d'adieu à la marque australienne. Nice car, isn't it? So one of the best cars that Holden's ever made. In fact, it is the best car that Holden's has made. Both my parents worked at GMH here at Elizabeth, including uncles, cousins, uh, my husband, my son. It's been a, a lifelong tradition, really, since the moment I was born, really, because my father worked here. So, And it's been a, a sad occasion to have it closed. Le 20 octobre 2017, la dernière voiture sortait des chaînes de l'usine Holden. La maison mère, General Motors, en avait décidé ainsi. Au total, 153 000 voitures ont été fabriquées ici. Upsetting. <laughs> upsetting, very upsetting. Over the years that I used to drive at the back of this plant and park for 36 years, and now I'm just, yeah, lost for words. It's emotional. I mean, to have years and years, you know, of memories built here. It's, it's given us our, our family, our home. But, you know, Lighting as Aussies, we, we soldier on. Yeah. We've just got to keep going. And that's what we do. Yeah, it is emotional. Dans les années 70, l'usine a employé jusqu'à 7000 ouvriers. Et depuis la fermeture, on y assure un service de reclassement. Welcome to the Holden Transition Center. What we're doing here, look, with Holden closing its manufacturing operations here in Australia, we want to do everything we could for our people. So this center is all about transitioning our employees and giving the best opportunities for future work. En 2017, il restait moins de 1000 ouvriers dans l'usine. Ils viennent par exemple y apprendre des rudiments en informatique. Ils ne sont plus très jeunes, ils ont passé leur vie à assembler des voitures et le maniement de la souris n'est pas évident. Ils auront du mal à retrouver du travail dans un monde moderne qui n'est pas le leur. Mais Jamie Getgood ne doute de rien pour le porte-parole de Holden, la fermeture de l'usine était même une fête. The last workers here were on October 20, that's when our last car was built. Um, and we made sure that was a celebration. We didn't want it to be a funeral or a wake. We want to make sure that they were celebrating the great legacy that they left in this business. Economically, it didn't make sense to build cars in this country. So um, it, was, it was hard to do everything we could to, to keep this business alive, but economically, it just didn't make sense. As good as this facility is, it just didn't make sense. I think um, we're proud of what we've achieved, and I think our, our workforce that really showed that they were going to do everything they could to show how good we were. So I'd say pride is a better emotion that we had. La marque Holden ne va pas complètement disparaître. Mais ces voitures seront importées d'autres usines de General Motors dans le monde. À la fin de l'année 2017, Holden n'était plus que quatrième au classement des constructeurs dans le pays. Avec la disparition de la dernière usine australienne, les ventes vont chuter et certains revendeurs sont remerciés. Le garage va changer de nom, son patron est amer. Right, that is finished in Australia today. Well, it's an American company. Trump uh, theology is it's America first and the rest of the world comes second. All Australians are victims. Victime d'une rationalisation de l'entreprise General Motors, 
qui, à la demande du président américain, mais aussi de son prédécesseur, Barack Obama, se recentre sur les états unis Pour l'Australie, c'est une rupture. Les autres grandes marques ont également fermé leurs usines. C'en est désormais fini des voitures « made in Australia ». Ford have closed in Australia, uh, Toyota have closed in Australia, and now Holden, there's just no local manufacturing. Uh, you know, Chrysler, uh, Mitsubishi, uh, there were just thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Manufacturing industry, perhaps they moved into areas that they can produce cheaper than us, then we can go into high tech or cryptocurrency or high tech technology that Australians are good at. We kind of lose, slowly losing our. our in- Identity bit by bit. Although Holden is iconic, uh, I think it's a sign of the times. La fin d'une époque, celle où pour découvrir et développer cet immense territoire au bout du monde, des migrants venus d'Europe étaient fiers de conduire des autos fabriquées sur place. Mais aujourd'hui, les voitures importées, principalement d'Asie, représente l'écrasante majorité du marché. Hello. We're at the National Motor Museum in Birdwood, South Australia. I my name is Don Loffler and I'm a Holden historian and a great friend of GM Holden Limited. Un grand ami de l'entreprise, un spécialiste de Holden qui roule en Honda. The unfortunate thing about this car here is that it was made in Thailand uh, by people who are paid a pittance and really I shouldn't be driving it. Mais vous la conduisez. But I do. Pourquoi? Well, because it's it suits my needs. It, 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 it's, it's what I need. It's a very very good car and it suits my budget. Et vous vous, vous sentez coupable? I don't, I'm not happy about it, no. I would love to have been driving a Holden, of course, because of what I do. Hello, Paul. Go, Great to be Good here to in your wonderful museum. <laughs> the Holden car is actually in the Australian psyche, and that's because it meant so much to the Australian public when that car was released in 1948. It was a national achievement because since 1900 we'd been trying to produce a car ourselves and there'd been various attempts but nothing had ever got into mass production and at last we'd done it. Ce sentiment de fierté remonte à l'après-guerre quand le gouvernement australien avait fait de la création d'une marque locale avec l'aide de General Motors un des piliers de la construction de l'identité nationale de ce jeune pays. Brands have more are more than the businesses themselves, you know, they become so why was it it's important for national identity that we are empowered and create our own, our own manufacturing, our own stuff. Manufacturing is, is linked to our self-worth, our feeling of self-worth. So the actual pride that people had of actually owning, of being the manufacturers of their own, their own journey was important, I think. Australia, what's your favourite sport? Football, snack, ice, animal, kangaroo. And what's your favourite car, Australia? Dans les années 70, une publicité pour la marque avait imaginé ce slogan. L'Australie, c'est le football, les pâtés de viande, les kangourous et les Holden. Dans les banlieues d'Adélaïde, le rêve australien se résume encore à la maison individuelle de plein pied, la piscine et deux voitures, beaucoup de Holden. Hi, my name is Cara and welcome to Paraka. It's a suburb in Adelaide in South Australia. It's part of the northern suburbs and uh, it's where the, the home of Holden is and I'm a big fan of Holden. Journaliste local et passionné par l'automobile, Cara n'aime pas que l'on réserve ce domaine aux hommes, 
comme elle n'accepte pas que son pays se retrouve aujourd'hui dépossédé d'une partie de son identité. Dans certaines banlieues ouvrières, le chômage est visible. Au total, 20 000 emplois auraient été perdus. Emplois directs, sous-traitants et commerces environnants. There's going to be an increase in, in, in domestic violence. There's going to be an increase in drug and alcohol taking. There could be an increase in su suicidal ideation. Michael Evans est assistant social. Il nous reçoit chez lui accompagné de John, un ancien ouvrier de Holden au chômage. Il nous parle de l'envers du décor. That's, that won't be the big picture. That's the minority who are struggling. Um, so I don't want to sound, you know, you know, gloom and doom, but that for some people, and that's where I think the people, the tr places like the transition um, centre need to look at the emotional and mental welfare of, of ex-employees. And because you've come out of that environment where Holden was like a bubble, it was like another world, it's very, very hard to distinguish what the rest of the world was really like. Une bulle avec un quartier entier construit dans les années 50 autour de l'usine Holden. A Place to Grow, ce film de l'époque fait la promotion de l'Australian Way of Life auprès des nouveaux habitants qui venaient parfois à peine d'arriver en Australie. Beaucoup venaient du Royaume-Uni et c'est en hommage à la couronne britannique, l'Australie est membre du Commonwealth, que le quartier avait été baptisé Elizabeth. La reine elle-même était venue visiter l'usine dans les années 60. Australian engineers studied the latest methods used overseas and adapted this knowledge to Australian conditions. Des scènes dont se souviennent les retraités qui se retrouvent au centre communautaire d'Elisabeth. Ils viennent tous les jours pour y danser et partager un repas pour ne pas rester seuls chez eux. Beaucoup sont des anciens de chez Holden et certains vous parlent avec ce délicieux accent venu tout droit de la BBC. Everything about Holden's was good, good wage, um, looked after, but a pity that they've gone. My husband worked at Holden's, my two sons, my son-in-law and my grandson all worked at Holden's. My husband transferred from Vauxhall's in England to Holden's in Australia, yes. But my sons, they knew it was going to close and of course they took early retirement because they was offered, they were very fortunate, they got other jobs. Si Keith Hamilton a osé s'offrir sa Holden Director, c'est qu'il a lui aussi retrouvé du travail. Une maison, des enfants bien éduqués, une grande piscine et plusieurs voitures. Ils ont bien vécu grâce à Holden qui avait la réputation de très bien payer ses ouvriers. Et c'est peut-être là une des raisons pour lesquelles personne n'a bougé quand l'usine a fermé. The way I we we probably laid back. I think Australians yeah. are, are laid back. If we turned around and said no, no, we're not going to have this. Don't think we, we would have had enough followers to to go along and and I think people come complacent. And people that don't work for Holdens don't like Holdens, and so they wouldn't have supported us. So, so if if we as all Holdens workers went out and went to the Parliament House and And protested. And protested. We would have only had probably half, uh, and then nobody, no outsiders. You might have got a small percentage of outsiders, yes, but not a lot. Une situation qui désespère le plus grand syndicat australien, qui a le sentiment d'avoir été abandonné et trahi 
par un gouvernement ultralibéral qui a privilégié le libre-échange plutôt que le sauvetage d'une filière industrielle. You know, we understand that people in Europe may not realize that we under we are under the the same dilemma in relation to capitalist pressures that apply across the whole of the of the whole of the world and that is that you know capitalists make a decision to produce manufacture where it's the cheapest to do that and if that means leaving uh, and closing up a, an establishment in the country and moving to another country they won't hesitate to do that Comment un pays aussi développé que l'Australie, héritier d'une tradition ouvrière venue du Royaume-Uni, peut se retrouver dans une situation aussi dangereuse de dépendance aux importations Au sein de l'université, John Spur dirige le département d'études industrielles. Ses bureaux sont installés dans la friche, laissée à l'abandon par la fermeture de l'usine Mitsubishi. And I think that's a consequence uh, in part of policy decisions at the national level, at the national level. In particular, uh, you know, the idea that we don't really need uh, a robust uh, mass manufacturing industry or an automotive industry, that came into question here in Australia. Whereas in other countries, including the US and, uh, and uh, other parts of Europe, there was a I think a, a strong view that you needed to retain the automotive industry, that it was an important part of the industrial fabric, and there were enormous social and economic benefits of having an auto industry there. And with a closure, you lose those skills and capabilities, and the danger of that is that it fuels a, a, you know, a cycle, uh, a vicious cycle, if you like, of self-reinforcing decline. Et pourtant, les chiffres du chômage en Australie ne sont pas mauvais. Un taux de 5,5% au niveau national un peu plus pour la région d'Adélaïde. Mais les effets de la fermeture de Holden sont encore à venir, avec ses conséquences politiques. Ultimately, the problem with that is um, community breakdown, political disenfranchisement, uh, and a lot of unhappy people who are looking for an alternative. And you see that playing out in Australia, in the current political environment, where there's a Uh, a, a movement away from the two major political parties and support for independence uh, as people reach out um, and demand or, or are desperately seeking an alternative. Ça ressemble à l'élection de Trump dans un sens. It does. It's the same sort of forces uh, I think drove people towards Trump. Face aux deux grands partis, les libéraux à droite et les travaillistes à gauche. Il y a désormais des indépendants qui font campagne sur cette question de la désindustrialisation. Nick Xenophon est l'homme qui monte dans l'état de l'Australie méridionale. Il commence par nous montrer le parking situé derrière son bureau. 2022-2024, 26, 27 cars in the car park, and only one of them is Australian made. That probably tells the biggest story, doesn't it? Ten years ago, uh, about 12% of Australia's uh, GDP was based on manufacturing. Now it's down to 6%. Germany is uh, a, a case in point. Something like 22% of their GDP is based on manufacturing uh, because they understand the value of that. They've got the Fraunhofer Institute where there's collaboration between government and industry and research bodies and universities. That's the model we should have here, but instead uh, we've just um, exported our minerals, we've, we haven't value added in the way that we should. Si la droite n'a pas défendu le maintien de Holden, à gauche, on se fait une raison. Élu travailliste Tony Piccolo est né à Naples et toute sa famille a émigré pour travailler chez Holden. Et c'est peut-être cette mentalité du migrant qui retrousse ses manches et repart dans la vie qui explique aussi le manque de réaction. If something closes, you have two options. You can lie down and do nothing, or you be proactive and make sure that you support the people in the community. And as a government, we've been proactive to support the people, and a lot of people have found new work. And we are supporting new industries and new areas of growth in this area. Well, what Australians are noted for is to get on with it. We have a good reputation of saying is that uh, when, things have to, when things get tough, you know, the tough get going. Comment continuer à fabriquer australien quand les salariés de Thaïlande, du Vietnam ou de Chine font la même chose pour moins cher 
Le pays n'a que 24 millions d'habitants, un marché insuffisant à l'échelle du monde. Et ces dernières années, la force du dollar australien pénalisait les exportations. Et pourtant, il y a des petites entreprises qui survivent comme Rossi Boots. Son énergique directrice du marketing mise sur le « made in Australia ». There's all sorts of skills and all sorts of jobs that can be maintained. So that's always uh, something we're thinking about is, is, you know, what comes back filtered through the Adelaide factory and how can we maintain manufacturing here. L'atelier emploie moins de 100 salariés, des miraculés, dans un secteur qui a vu toutes les marques historiques délocaliser la production en Asie. Mais ils se battent et ça marche. S'adapter, se battre, c'est aussi le credo de cette PME qui fabrique ici des éviers, la dernière en Australie. Une entreprise de conseil informatique lui a fourni un logiciel pour optimiser la production. I believe if we can compete uh, with anyone in the world on price, then, then people will buy, still buy Australia. But we can't just rely on made in Australia. I think that what is inevitable is that things will change. Uh, regions will be productive and then manufacturing will shift within countries and inside and outside of countries. But, but what's important is that uh, is that people accept and adopt the change. Mais il est difficile en Australie de se plaindre. Le pays a cette image d'un endroit où il fait bon vivre, the lucky country. Ses habitants ont la réputation d'être décontractés, positifs, entreprenants. Il était alors facile de faire disparaître un pan entier de l'économie. C'est l'opinion de Michael Evans, l'assistant social qui accompagne les anciens ouvriers au chômage. It was an easy process to, to move or close holdings because there's no riots, there's no uprising. People just go, oh well, it just is, and move forward, not thinking about what's happening, going to happen in the future. What's going to replace that manufacturing industry? We're the lucky country. We've created this ethos of who we are as this happy-go-lucky country, and I think that's changing because of... It's an easy target sometimes to, to move industry away. Et si les Australiens étaient victimes de leur caractère, de leur mode de vie Après avoir migré au bout du monde, construit un beau pays, découvert les grands espaces au volant de leur Holden, exporté leur culture, les voilà tout simplement consommateurs. Bill est un jeune fan des Holden. Il se demande si finalement, ce ne sont pas ses compatriotes qui ont laissé mourir l'entreprise. Holden were producing good cars and Australians weren't really buying them to the extent they probably could have been. So, sort of our own choice, I guess, as a consumer. Une page de l'histoire de l'Australie vient de se tourner. Mais cette question se pose tout autant en Europe ou en Amérique du Nord. À coup d'importation massive, un pays développé peut aujourd'hui vivre sans ouvriers, au risque de sacrifier des emplois et des hommes, au risque d'y laisser son âme.